Hi, I'm Brian. I'm here at Saris in Madison, Wisconsin, and this is the Saris MP1. It comes fully assembled in the box, but I'm going to walk you through unboxing it and setting it up with your trainer and bike on it to get your first ride in. All right, so we've got the MP1 down on the floor. We'll walk through a quick unboxing and start getting everything set up. So obviously, first thing is taking the top off. And there's the MP1 fully assembled. Uh, everything that's in here is meant to secure it during shipping. So we simply remove cardboard pieces. You'll note on the front piece, there are some spacers in here. I'll show you what these are for a little later on in the video. One on each side. Set that piece of cardboard aside. Grab the sides. That all can go into the recycling bin. This piece, make sure you hang on to. These are your retention straps and the front wheel block. And now we just need to get the MP1 out of the box and set up on the floor. All right, so we've got the MP1 out of the box and on the floor. Before we put anything else onto the MP1, make sure that it's sitting stable on the floor. So if the floor isn't perfectly level, there are adjustable feet, one on each side in the back of the MP1. So you make sure that it's in contact on both sides and everything's stable. Next up, we're gonna grab our trainer and the front wheel block and start setting it up for a ride. So I've got my trainer, and, I, and this is the Saris H3. The MP1 is meant to be compatible with most major trainers that are on the market. Go to saris.com if you're curious about how a particular one fits. We have a guide on there that'll show you roughly where things should be placed. In this case, the H3 sits in the back of the MP1. The legs on the drive side are sitting on top of this track. On the non-drive side, almost up to the edge of where the grip tape is. Now I'll grab the front wheel block. When we're unboxing, we set this piece aside. Uh, so this is the front wheel block and the straps that will hold the trainer onto the platform. So these straps will add in later and the front wheel block we can put on now. So there are a couple pieces of hardware that come through the bottom of the wheel block. Those feed into these two front channels. And they just slide in like that. So when you're setting up your bike, most road bikes, the front wheel block is gonna be somewhere in this area. If you have a large frame cross country mountain bike, it might go all the way past the front edge. And it's meant to do that for larger frames. Uh, so big wheelbase mountain bikes uh, or extra large size road bike frames, probably up to the edge of those tracks. Otherwise, you'll be generally in about this position, but we won't lock anything into place until we have our bike. So let me grab the bike and we'll set things up. So now we'll put the bicycle onto the trainer while it's on the MP1. Uh, and obviously no big difference uh, for putting a bike onto the trainer, whether it's on the floor or on the MP1. I'm just gonna follow your manufacturer's specifications. And again, we're using the Saris H3 on the platform right now, but the MP1 is designed to be compatible with most other brands uh, and designs of trainers that are on the market. So we do have a simple fit guide at saris.com if you're using a different brand of trainer and you're curious about where we recommend putting things. So bike is secure to the trainer. Now we'll move on to the front wheel. So front wheel just rests comfortably inside of that wheel block. One nice thing to make it easier for yourself, make sure that that valve stem is not in the way of the straps. We'll move the riser block into position so everything is snug. And then tighten down these little thumb wheels and those don't have to be anything more than just hand tight. The weight of the bike will keep that in place. But for security's sake, it is important to make sure that these wheel straps are nice and snug around the rim. Again, you're going to be moving on the platform, so it's important that everything that's attached to the MP1 stays connected to it. So we'll be 
anchoring the trainer to the platform, and we also have the front wheel now snug in the wheel block. So on the back of the platform, now this is where you're going to need an Allen key or a simple multi-tool. These straps have a piece of hardware uh, in the middle, and then this piece of hardware which fits into the channels on top of the MP1. Just like the front wheel block, they slide in, position those underneath the trainer legs. So in this case, we're using the interior track on the drive side, the exterior track on the non-drive side. Once everything is in position, you can see that they're underneath the legs. You'll simply fold the leg back, keeping the strap in place. And with your multi-tool or Allen key, simply tighten those down. And again, it is important to make sure that everything is pretty snug, but you don't have to over tighten. Uh, just hand tight to make sure that it won't slide fore and aft. Put the leg back in place. And this is where you will want to make sure you're using some uh, strong effort. Pull that Velcro strap very snug and get as much wrap on it as you can all the way down to the bottom. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Simply tightening down the retention strap. And once this is done the first time, unless you're switching bikes for some reason, uh, you won't really have to change these settings. The trainer will stay in one spot. Simply double check before and after rides. Make sure everything is still tight before you start off. Make sure that's good and snug. And now we should be ready to go. So we've got everything secure. Just double check that the straps are nice and tight. Front wheel as well. Yeah, everything feels good. So before you really kit up and ride for the first time, it's not a bad idea just to, to get on the bike once, take a look down, make sure that the top tube is in line with the front wheel, handlebars are straight, make sure everything's going to look and feel comfortable for you. And is all snug and in place, and we're in good shape. So I can hop off, put my riding clothes on, and go for that first ride. When you're setting up the MP1 with a more traditional wheel-on trainer, it's very similar to the direct drive models. Uh, you're still gonna be using the retention straps, but in almost every case, you'll be using these back channels. So here's a Saris M2 our classic series frame trainer. So you'll get that onto the MP1. Uh, we have a leveling foot on the back of here, so make sure that the trainer is level on top of the platform. And then using the same retention straps that you would for a direct drive, you can slide them into the back. And again, this is a very common design for wheel-on trainers. There's usually a bar right in the back of the trainer. So you simply slide the straps underneath there, tighten down the straps using an Allen key or a multi-tool. And then repeat on the other side. You'll place the trainer back on top of those straps. And again, uh, making sure everything is snug. It doesn't matter if you're folding them over one way or the other. Uh, the important thing is that you get the Velcro straps to be very snug to prevent the trainer from sliding or rocking while it's moving on top of the platform. So you can see what it looks like with the straps going in either direction. As long as they're snug and holding the trainer, make sure it doesn't move off of the platform while you're riding the MP1. And then on the front riser block, when we're unboxing, we set these aside. This is an extension for the front wheel block. So what you'll need to do is take the wheel block out of the channel and included with the riser block is extra hardware. You simply slide those out. 
a nice satisfying snap. And you'll swap out the hardware from the thumb screws and replace it with the longer bolts so that you can fit the riser block underneath. So it's a simple swap. Take them out from both sides. Make sure not to lose those in case you do switch to a direct drive trainer down the road. Put the wheel block on top of the riser block and then you feed the hardware through and attach the thumb knobs back on top. So if you're setting up uh, your trainer, even if it is a direct drive, and you want to have a simulated feeling of climbing, uh, you can also use these. There is a second extension block in the box as well. So you could have two total extensions on there, uh, simulate a, a steady uphill climb, if uh, that's something that you're training for. And then once again, slides into the channels, and you'll set it up with your bike, depending on the wheelbase of your specific bike.